Welcome to the e-commerce badassery podcast, the place for scrappy female entrepreneurs who want to learn actionable steps and strategies to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in your e-commerce business. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster, a 20-year retail veteran who spent three years as the only employee of a seven-figure online store. That shit was crazy. I know exactly how it feels to do all the things and I'm sharing everything I learned the hard way so you don't have to. I may have started this business by accident, but supporting badass bosses like you lights me the fuck up and I am so stoked to see you grow. Are you ready, babe? Let's roll. Hey, e-commerce friend. Today's episode is a replay of one of our most popular episodes, and even if you listen to it the first time, I encourage you to listen to it again because it's likely your business has evolved a lot since then and there might be something that's more relevant to you right now, or you might just hear it differently. So don't go away, listen through, let's get into it. Welcome back to the E-Commerce Badassery Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo coster It's officially Q4, which means it's time to get your ass in high gear and prepare for what's to come. Everywhere you turn, you hear e-commerce peeps talking about how crazy they expect online holiday sales to be this year, and I gotta say, I agree. Now, of course, we've got other variables to consider, like the election, no stimulus payments, not as much extra unemployment, But people are going back to work, and while it's still at an all-time high, unemployment is going down. Yes, there are a lot of people suffering, and it's super sad, but there's also a lot of people who are still spending. The short story is, for the right categories, e-commerce is going to be crazy this holiday season. We've already walked through my three-step process for a kick-ass Q4, planning, preparation, and promotion. We cover everything from your inventory to your email marketing and everything in between. So go take a listen to those episodes. It's 22 through 24, and I'll put the links in the show notes. If you go through those step-by-step the way I laid it out, your holiday season will automatically be less stressful because you'll already have the most important pieces of your campaign planned and ready to go, which means no last-minute scrambling and stress. But for today's episode, we're going to get a little less tactical and talk through some simple things you can do to go through the season with ease. The first thing I want to talk about is mindset. Now, I'm no mindset coach, but one thing I do know for sure is that negativity breeds more negativity, and if one thing goes wrong or doesn't go to plan, it can be really easy to just get into a negative spiral. But when it comes to running an e-commerce business in Q4, no matter how much planning and preparation you do, there's still a possibility that something unexpected will happen. So I encourage you to give yourself and your team some grace while you're all working through this season. And when shit does hit the fan, go into problem solving mode instead of just stress spiraling. Speaking of grace, give yourself grace at home as well. Mentally prepare yourself and your family that things might get a little off course and you won't be able to do it all. Maybe the laundry will pile up more than usual and you'll be ordering in dinner instead of cooking every night. If you don't already have help at home, maybe you need to invest some during this time. Or you'll need to reallocate who does what at home to keep things flowing as smoothly as possible. Ultimately, you have to figure out what you can and can't tolerate and make any necessary adjustments. Whatever it is that ends up getting turned upside down, Just remember that it's just a season in your business and it's not going to be forever. For the last few months before I quit my job to go full-time in the business, things were getting a little crazy at home. The laundry piled up, my hygiene was suffering, and our place was in desperate need of a deep clean. You know, where you pull out all the furniture and appliances to get all that unseen stuff. But there was no time because I was prioritizing hanging out with my husband instead of cleaning under the fridge. But I knew that I could tolerate that. Ultimately, we just had to give ourselves permission to focus on pushing forward in our businesses, knowing that it was just a season and our time would come. 
It was going to do no good to beat myself up about it in the meantime. And that first weekend I was free, I scrubbed the shit out of this place and damn, did it feel good. Now that you've got your permission slip to not be perfect and do it all, let's figure out what your work schedule is going to be. Bringing in your family or whoever else this affects can also be helpful. You just want to make sure everyone is on the same page and they understand these are the times you'll be working and this is when you'll be with them. Funny enough, just like customer service issues, I see the biggest stressor between people in general is just unmet expectations. So as much as you can lay out ahead of time, the better. Of course, you need to leave room for adjustments because life, but having a general idea of when you can focus 100% on work, you will be much more productive during that time. A while ago, I did a podcast episode about getting more done in less time. It's episode nine if you want to take a listen. But in that episode, I talk about batching your work, which basically just means working on the same type of tasks in blocks of time. While this is always a good idea, it's a really good idea for Q4, especially if you're homeschooling your kids while running your business, which more power to you. I do not envy you. You are magical. But everyone's routines are thrown off right now, so we have to adjust. The more you can plan and prep, the smoother things will go. You don't have to have everything planned out to the minute, but if you can block out larger chunks of times for things like creative work versus operational work, you'll limit the amount of context switching you're doing and have a better chance of getting into a flow state. So maybe you block out two hours to work on your email campaigns, for example, or you set aside an hour for social media engagement and answering customer service emails. When you're trying to figure out what you're going to do and when, be mindful of what else you have going on that day and how much brain power each of those tasks is going to take you. So for instance, when I'm planning out a podcast episode or creating educational content, I really don't want any distractions. If my husband is bouncing back and forth between the office and the living room, which is typical for him, I'll often just go into the bedroom so I'm not distracted by him talking to me or being on the phone with clients or just his presence in and out of the room. If I'm engaging on social media, I don't really need that same level of focus, so that doesn't bother me. For you, if you're homeschooling your kids, be mindful of what you can do, if anything, while you're also trying to support them. That might be a time where you can't do anything more than put together boxes or answer some customer service emails. And if you're not fulfilling your own orders or your volume isn't high enough that you necessarily have to ship every single day, you might just want to take some days off completely where you don't work in the business at all. There's going to be a lot of nuance here depending upon how you work, your other obligations, and your business itself. Think through what is realistic for you what expectations you need to set for yourself and your family, and what additional support you can get, whether by hiring or divvying up the responsibilities a little bit differently in your family for the time being. Next up, let's create some new systems in our business to help us stay organized and save us time and energy. My favorite way to do this is by laying out end-of-day procedures. This is helpful no matter what time of year it is. Having a daily habit of getting yourself set up for the next day is a game changer. It lets you start fresh and hit the ground running every single day. What this looks like is going to be different for every business, but it could be things like straightening up your workspace at the end of the day so you can start with a clean slate in the morning, refilling your packing and shipping station with supplies so you're ready to rock and roll as the orders roll in assembling boxes ahead of time to shorten your packing time, emptying trash cans even if they're not full so you don't get stalled halfway through the next day, creating your to-do list for the next day, and I find this one to be especially helpful so you don't waste time in the morning trying to remember where you left off, and even peeking in on your ads, reviewing your sales and your inventory levels so you can make notes of what you want to work on first thing the next day. Think about all the things that could potentially interrupt you or slow you down the next time you sit down to work and get those done the night before. Now that you've got yourself set up for the next day's success, 
it's time to figure out what gets you motivated to work and stay in that get shit done zone. For me, I know I need a little time when I first wake up to just have my coffee and not talk to anyone. Sometimes I like a little music in the AM to get me pumped up, but when I'm working on things that take brain power, I like silence. I don't even like those binaural beats, even though they're supposed to help you focus. Oh, and I regularly have a candle burning. Right now I'm switching between a pumpkin spice candle and a leather scented one. Who doesn't like a little ambiance? Figure out what it is that you need and make sure you set yourself up for that the night before or at least run through the checklist in your head before you sit down. I'm notorious for leaving behind my laptop charger and my water. And there's nothing worse than being in flow and realizing your laptop is on 5% battery with no charger in sight. It seems innocuous, but when you have multiple of those tiny interruptions each day, it can easily waste away your time without you even realizing it. Just like one notification on our phone can take us down a rabbit hole of mindless scrolling. Or if you run to the kitchen to grab a snack and then get distracted by someone asking you a question, or you just feel compelled to do anything other than work, so you decide it's a good time to clean the counters or take out the garbage. Next up is prioritization. In the beginning of this episode, I talked about giving yourself grace. A CEO's to-do list is never done, and that's okay. When it comes to getting through Q4, you have to take a real hard look at everything on that to-do list and ask yourself, if I can't do it all, what is going to have the biggest revenue impact on my business and make my customers the happiest? For instance, if it comes down to posting on Instagram or sending an email, in most cases, the email is likely to drive more revenue than the Instagram post. If it's between updating that graphic on your homepage or responding to a customer service inquiry, you probably want to answer the customer first. Granted, these are very simplified situations, but the idea is that you don't have to do it all. Your business will not fail if you skip a day on Instagram or don't update your website with holiday graphics. What you can and should focus on will vary widely based on your business and bandwidth. When you're deciding on what is and isn't important, a good place to start is focusing on what is likely to drive the most revenue and make for the happiest customers. And I don't want to go too in depth here because it really does deserve its own episode, but have you heard of the Eisenhower Matrix? I'll put a link in the show notes so you have a visual representation, but essentially it's where you group tasks and to-dos in four categories. Urgent and important. These are the things that you do. Urgent and not important, these are the things that you delegate. Important and not urgent, these are the things that you create a plan or schedule for. And not important and not urgent, these are the things you eliminate. This is just another way to approach all the things you think you need to do right now and figure out what really is necessary and what can wait. Now, the last thing I want you to think about is what is your goal for Q4? It can be really easy to get swept up into the frenzy of the holiday season, especially this year, knowing that e-commerce sales are at an all-time high. But maybe you don't care about having an epic holiday season. Maybe your business is already successful and you just want to coast through. Maybe your business is at a place where it basically runs on its own because you've spent years building it up that way. And if you need a few more sales, you know you can just turn on a Facebook ad or send an email and you're good. I was speaking to someone recently and this is where she's at with her business. And what's most important to her right now is just enjoying this time with her family. Before you get yourself crazy thinking you need to do all the things, Really dig deep and think about what is most important to you this year. If growth really is it, then by all means, do all the things or as many of them as you can manage and get your hands on the Badass Holiday Planning Guide. It's available right now. The link is in the show notes for more information, but it's awesome. If growth is not your goal this year, there is no fucking shame in that. Ultimately, This is your business and you get to build it however you want. That's the beauty of being a self-funded and bootstrapped CEO, my friend. You don't have to answer to anyone but your damn self. And I think that's the perfect place to end this one. 
Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I so appreciate you. Until next time, e-commerce friends, I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful if you'd leave a review on Apple Podcasts and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you're looking to surround yourself with more product entrepreneurs who totally get your life right now, get your booty on over to the e-commerce badassery Facebook group. Can't wait to see you there. Until next time, e-commerce friends, stay badass.